Hi guys and girls on YouTube and welcome to my channel. Well, after the last disaster I had, trying to repair a vintage TV, um, a rediffusion where the line transform packed up halfway through the video, um, I'm going to try my luck with this. This is a, a, a Murphy TV. Now, uh, when I first saw it from the back, I thought it was a T20. Uh, but now I've got the back off, I've realised it's not a T20. It's a Z718. So uh, let's just take a quick look. Uh, four push button mechanical tuner. Um, I've already got the back off and um, there's a reason. This actually came from uh, John Joe at the Vintage Irish TV and Radio channel. Um, there's a reason why I picked this particular one. Um, I've got a couple of others uh, but this looks to be the most promising one to repair. Uh, because it seems to have had um, a new line transformer and a new tripler um, already fitted. So I've already got the back off. Let's just have a quick look at the model number on the back. So if you, if you take a look at the back, it looks just like a T20 back. Uh, but it actually tells you down there, look, chassis Z718C. So let's have a quick look inside the set first before we do anything. Now, this is another set that I've largely forgotten about in the passing of time. Um, I used to repair a lot of these in the 80s, but then again, the 1980s, it's nearly 40 years ago. Um, so, the uh, only way to jog my memory would be to get the, uh, the service manual out, but that's going to take a little time to uh, look for it. So let's just have a quick look. So it's fitted with a, a Toshiba black stripe tube in line gun. Uh, with very minimal convergence controls. Um, this is the scan drive panel which you flick a thing there and it should just pull down like that. Now it doesn't look in too bad condition. Um, the line time base is over here which I think what I'm going to do as I'm going to this panel looks like it's already been out because it's not fastened in one end so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that panel out and I'm going to uh, take it home and climatise it for a week or so in the airing cupboard because we don't want any more disasters with a line output transformer uh, but as you can see the transformer the triplet appear to be brand new ones um, I think that's the IF panel standing up there uh, that's the colour decoder there with the delay line on uh, red green blue outputs at the top now I've no idea what's wrong with this set uh, I've not even plugged it in but um, this time I'm going to air out the line output transformer so we don't have any big disasters so let's just get the line panel out and we can have a close look at that first right well actually a few things are jogging me memory now um, I remember now the T20 and the T22 as a separate, uh, a big power supply with um, I can't remember if it was a thyristor control power supply or a chopper transistor. I think it was a thyristor anyway. That was on the bottom board and here we don't have much of a power supply board. So let's get this. I've undone the um, two screws now. It's dropped into its position. We should be able to take this time based board out now. Right, well that's the time base board out, the line output stage, and we can give this a better inspection now. Um, now I've remembered a couple of things about these. I remember the east-west modulator diodes used to go faulty. And I think it was particularly this one here that should be marked SK4E, I think. Um, and one of the other problems was, you used to get dry joints on the back of this connector. And you could have some nasty burn-ups. Uh, but they look like somebody's already resoldered them. Uh, now the back looks in very good condition. And um, if we turn it round, you will see it has indeed had a brand new line output transformer and tripler in. Now the only thing we're going to have to watch is we don't knock that off there. Um, and I have noticed something here as well. If you look around these connections, they're very, very green. So this has been kept somewhere damp. Uh, and it's for that reason I'm not going to plug this in 
until it stood for quite a while in a very warm place um, but you can see it is in very very good condition I think they're the line flyback tuning capacitors uh, there's of course two transistors under there um, I think they used to be BU108s off the top of my head uh, now it does look like they've been by the soldering there it looks like they've been replaced at one time or another um, I've checked the fuse there the fuse is okay um, so um, what I'm going to have to do there's not a lot I can do now apart from uh, dig out the service manual leave this to climatize for quite a while and then uh, then we'll have a go at plugging it in and hope there's no major disasters like last time but yeah apart from that that's in fairly good condition right so now we're about four months on um, I've had this panel in the airing cupboard at home for a good four months or maybe even a bit longer uh, to make sure that transformer's well dried out uh, now uh, as you can see it's all nice and clean I've got that bit of green corrosion off on the top um, I've also managed to find the service manual um, and that is the one there MC6301 so before we do anything else let's have a look I've looked through the service manual some things have come back to me um, I can see one or two quirky things that need to be explained so let's just take a look at them first and then uh, we'll see about powering something up right so as, as I said earlier this doesn't have a separate power supply uh, and if you look at that we've just got uh, rectified and smooth mains um, that gives you a HT rail of 260 volt so all the uh, regulation, the picture breathing, that's all carried out in the line output stage. Now one of the things that springs to mind, the most common fault in these, is the 910 ohm resistor in the 12 volt regulator. Um, and if you look at that, that's the, it's the base current for that transistor. Um, it's not difficult to see why this was a common cause of trouble uh, in this set, because you're actually dropping uh, 30 volts down to 12 um, so it's not surprising that this was the most unreliable part of the circuit so um, it's not a problem I've got plenty of these resistors uh, I've got some more packets somewhere that's the only one I could find but let's just have a look at a few more quirks of this set before we do anything right so first of all let's take a look at this the over voltage protection circuit uh, now if we look at that it's a potential divider and it just comes off pin 2 of the line output transformer uh, which is actually connected to winding pin 9 which is actually the earthy end of the emitter um, of the line output pair so all the total current of the line output um, stage flows through here and then it flows to ground through that 27 ohm resistor um, so a potential um, volt, a, a, a voltage is going to be built up against this potential divider and in the event of an excessive pulse it causes that zener diode there to avalanche now these two transistors here uh, if you look they are arranged as a thyristor uh, so once you've triggered these transistors they remain in a lock position um, and when they conduct all they do is they short the line drive there down to ground uh, which will kill the line oscillator and that will stop the set um, so uh, once this is triggered um, there's no way of re-triggering it you have to turn off the set right so here's another unusual quirk if we look at the primary of the line driver transformer it actually goes through a 500 milliamp fuse and then it goes to a capacitor uh, which is actually connected uh, straight to the rectified mains now that is actually a kickstart circuit that charges up initially at switch on uh, which will provide a feed for the collector of the line driver transistor down here um, now that only just kicks the circuit into operation once the actual line stage is running uh, the line driver transformer is fed through this resistor from the midpoint of the two um, 
the two line output transistors so if that's dried up um, the set's not going to start and also it only provides a quick kick if the, if the set doesn't start in a, a split second then it's not going to start at all you have to wait for that to discharge um, and there's um, another capacitor somewhere we'll just move over to in a minute um, but you'd have to wait for that to discharge before you can actually restart the set so if the set trips out yeah, there's no good switching on and off quick it won't start at all right now here's the other quirk to this set the actual line oscillator chip uh, that's a very similar arrangement there's a kick start capacitor that's fed from the rectified main so once again um, if that capacitor's dried up or the line oscillator doesn't start immediately you're going to have to wait for that to discharge before you can try and restart the set um, now that's just a kick start uh, when it comes into operation that diode bears reverse bias um, and the line out the line oscillator chip is fed from the 12 volt supply which is actually produced by the 12 volt regulator which gives a lot of trouble um, so as you can see um, there's quite a few reasons why this set might not start and then uh, if it doesn't start you're going to have to pause for I don't know 30 seconds a minute before you can even try and restart it um, now I've got a plan and I think this is what I can't remember I think this is what we used to do years ago um, but the 30 volt rail here is actually produced by um, a winding on the transformer and rectified by the east-west modulator diodes uh, now one of these um, used to give a lot of trouble I've already checked the two in my set and they seem to be okay so I think what we're going to do is I'm going to just put a 30 volt supply onto there which will power uh, the 12 volt supply which should then run uh, the line oscillator and some parts of the frame output stage because the frame is quite complicated there's about 10 transistors um, but we're not going to be able to run all of the frame output stage uh, because if you look there the the height control uh, is fed from the 260 volt rail to improve the linearity um, so without a 260 volt rail we're not going to have the rest of the line stage running but we'll be able to check one or two things and certainly check uh, the line oscillator up to the um, up to the base of the transistor there so we should be able to make them tests by just applying 30 volts there and uh, we can take some oscillogram waveforms and uh, see what we've got Now if we look here at the back of the uh, time base board um, somebody's already replaced uh, the 910 ohm resistor and it's stuck to the back of the board so I'm just going to take that out and put uh, a brand new one in and it looks like the two um, the two regulating transistors also might have been out so let's just swap that resistor first Right so the resistor I've just taken out of the back of the board is working uh, but somebody's fitted a 1k anyway not um, 910 ohms so let's put the proper one in first right so that's the uh, new resistor it's marked R77 on the board now normally I'd clean off this flux residue with a solvent uh, but I'm not going to do it in this case because uh, I've tried it before and on something else and it rubs off this green film and it just leaves like a bare copper behind so rather than destroy this nice green finish I'm just going to leave that flux on there now actually looking at this time base board uh, I've just spotted another problem here uh, the green A1 control or background control uh, if you look there the carbon track has actually fallen off um, probably due to it being stored in damp conditions so um, it's definitely going to have to have a new green A1 control there before we power this on and uh, just one other interesting thing it's an inline gun the green guns in the middle so if you look at the convergence controls um, we don't have a convergence for the green 
uh, that doesn't need converging it's only the red and the blue so I'm going to have to find I've probably got some original controls for, for this but we're going to have to look for one of them that's going to take a while so I might just try and power this from a 30 volt bench power supply now and see what happens right so I think for now we'll just leave the time base panel out and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a 32 volt bench power supply on here um, and we definitely should be running the line oscillator which means uh, we should be able to scope a square wave line drive here at the base of 5VT1 uh, we might even have sound because I think the um, the IF stage has run from 12 volts as well so we might have some sort of audio but we can definitely check uh, the 12 volt supply although it's not it won't be under full load because you can't get this transistor or intermittent um, but uh, we should have 12 volt supply there and uh, we can't test much of the frame because um, the high voltage boost supply if you want for the linearity um, comes in very early so I don't think we can do a lot uh, but let's just uh, let's just get that connected to the bench power supply um, so it's that resistor there we need to be connecting to and um, that connects to these two green connectors here so 32 volts on either one of them and we clip on chassis and see what happens leaving out the time base panel right so a very slight mistake there uh, I've just realized this metal bar isn't connected to earth anywhere so we have to connect the earth of the power supply onto a convenient point uh, which is in my case C33 and I've just clipped it there because it fits better so that's where you put your earth C33 right so the 12 volt rail now is actually drawing uh, 680 milliamps uh, and there is quite a voltage drop across that resistor there uh, so this regulator is not working as hard as I thought it was uh, there's about 20 volts going in and we should be able to measure now what's coming out on the emitter so there we go and the answer to that is 12.19 volts so the, the 12 volt regulator circuit is all running uh, now what we need to do is check and uh, scope for line drive uh, I might try on the IC first uh, now of course the line driver transistor is here actually on the time base board so if we look at this pin 2 of the TBA950 takes us up to a plug and socket which then goes on to the time base so we need to find well it's probably just easier to measure at pin 2 let's see what we've got there right now that's interesting we have the supply voltage at pin 3 of the line oscillator of 8.64 volt but we don't have any line drive coming out of pin 2 and uh, the potential on pin 2 is very very low and there's a very very large voltage drop across R56 so I wonder if the line oscillator I see has shorted out yeah there's no line drive at all there on pin 2 so um, I wonder whether to just pop another IC in because I think it's only in um, a plug and socket base right well I've still got a few TBA 950s left so let's just swap that over and see what happens right I don't, I don't actually know what to think about this I, I'm gonna have to think about this and come back uh, the output at pin to the line driver that's obviously an open collector output uh, because there's a resistor there from the supply rail now I've checked that that's okay uh, but pin 13 there that's the um, oscillator capacitor so even if this IC wasn't producing an output you'd expect pin 13 to be still um, oscillating 
uh, but I don't have anything on pin 13 either um, so I'm going to have to stop the camera while I think about this because I would have expected this IC to just free run um, if you just applied um, a supply voltage to it so let's come back to it in a bit right well we still haven't got this going yet but I've just had another interesting thought something just come to me um, the whole of the we, we're drawing nearly 700 milliamp that's going somewhere um, now this whole of this IF panel apart from the video output stage which is fed straight from the 275 volt rail um, everything else runs off 12 volts or the audio amplifier off 32 volts so this whole panel should be running um, but I've just noticed that when we do switch on there's no um, there's no audio in the speaker which you'd expect something in the speaker if this whole IF panel's running so I've just disconnected the speaker and it turns out the speaker's open circuit so I've got a speaker here connected to the telly let's just turn on and see what happens so as you can see uh, we've got audio now with an external speaker connect so definitely the whole of the IF panels running um, and that's where all the currents going uh, now I did wonder if we could put um, um, a signal into the aerial but that's not going to be possible because um, the 33 volt stabilized supply um, for the varicap tuner is actually fed from the 260 volt rail through uh, a resistor to a stabilizer so we're not going to be able to um, connect a signal source to it and tune anything and we'll just audio so I'm going to stop the camera do some other work and uh, we'll come back to it right so I've still not got this going but time for some logical thinking I think this should just free run as soon as you apply uh, a voltage to pin 3 now I've got a steady voltage at pin 3 from the 12 volt rail um, but we don't have any output whatsoever on the open collector pin 2 and that um, pull up resistor there that's okay so let's have a look at the data sheet now for the TBA 950 right now it's actually a bit sparse this data sheet but it tells us what we need to know uh, this here is the oscillator block and that capacitor there that sets the free running frequency of the oscillator so pin I need to put a scope on pin 13 and see what we've got there and also it's uh, it looks like it's um, uh, a high quality capacitor I think it says styrene there polystyrene so let's just scope pin 13 and see what happens and the answer is no oscillation whatsoever on pin 13 right so I would have expected to see a free, run, free running oscillator at about line frequency or thereabouts on pin 13 we have nothing whatsoever uh, the timing capacitor is there C24 which is at the top corner of the IC let's move the chassis down so it's going to be that one there let's take that out and check that um, and before anybody notices um, yes there is a red tantalum there and that's not the problem because if we move over to the diagram that red tantalum is just a decoupling capacitor uh, for the supply rail to the IC so it's not that so that's what we're going to be taking out next the uh, tuning capacitor 10 nf right well that's not faulty either so I'm going to have to put this to one side and come back to it and think about it right well I've just had another quick thought I wonder if the horizontal hole control isn't working uh, so what I've actually done is I've desoldered um, two legs of that and tested it and that is okay um, also I've fitted back the um, polystyrene capacitor there um, and I've just tried it again and it's actually working now um, 
Now the only two things I've done is remove that and desolder that. So whether that or that capacitor is intermittent, but it is actually working now. So let's just take a quick look. Right, so that's pin two there. That's the line drive output. Uh, as you can see, that's working all right. So that's pin two, that's working. Next, we're going to check the um, the set oscillator frequency capacitor, pin 13. There you go, and that's also working. So why it suddenly started working, it can only be uh, the capacitor or the hold or the horizontal hold control there i've desoldered um two of the legs I, I suppose it could have been a dry joint on that capacitor uh, but anyway it's it's working again it's working now so i don't know what to tell you um i think the best thing to do now is to um get the main um, ht capacitor out there get that reformed uh We'll get that A1 control uh, replaced and uh, fit the time base board back in and see what happens. But there we go, we've got um, a good line drive output and uh, if you look here, that's with the time base panel removed. So I thought all along you should be able to um, scope some waveforms with that panel removed. Right, so I just have to uh, break off now because I've got some other jobs to do and uh, we'll come back to this another day. Right, okay, so uh, another day and we're back on this with a little bit of spare time um, while I wait for another parts delivery. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change this A1 pot because if you look there you can see it's obviously been damp somewhere uh, and some of the carbon tracks dropped off uh, now really it's a Toshiba black stripe tube you can't, I don't know if you can see that there I should have really tested the tube before I did anything um, but I'm very curious to see this on because it's a long time since I've seen one of these uh, but one thing is a little bit worrying if you look at the A1 pots, that's the green one in the middle. And you look to where the green one's set, and then you look to where the other two colours are set. So that would in, um, imply there's a serious imbalance in the tube for that to be that far around compared to the others. But let's just put a new pot in, and then we'll take it from there. Right, there we go. That's not so bad. Um, obviously, it would be better to change these other two to match. Uh, but that's something to be wary of in the future. Anything that's been standing in a damp condition um, looks like this track can depart from the uh, from the former. So um, right, that's the next bit done. Right, so I'm double checking my work at the moment because if you remember, I only brought this back to life by desoldering two components. Um, so that's pinned to the line oscillator I see, and as you can see, we're producing line drive still. And next I'm going to scope the base of 4VT22 because we should have a field ramp on there. Uh, we can't scope any further back this way because the, uh, the ramp generator or the ramp amplifier, sorry, is fed um, from the 260 volt rail for linearity. But we should have a frame ramp running at the base of that transistor uh, and that's as far as we can go then. Right, so that's the base there, VT22. I'll just press the auto set on the scope. And there we have the field ramp rate waveform. So this is all looking pretty good. Um, this is all looking like, providing there's not a fault in the line output stage, but I've just done some cold checks. Um, it looks like we can fit this board back in and uh, see what happens but i'm just uh, before we do that i'll just try one more thing right so at the moment um i've still got this connected to a power supply we're still running the signals and if and part of the frame if you remember i said that before the speaker was open circuit so i've just got a temporary one i'm going to clip on here
and let's just move that out of the way a minute. Just going to try the volume control on the front of the telly. Yeah, so the volume control's working. Um, I've established that it's probably the part's probably faulty because it can't turn it down to zero. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is with the time base panel still removed and this external speaker, I'm going to plug an aerial in here and see if we can tune in a signal from a skybox. Right, so skybox is connected to the telly in the aerial socket. I've got the temporary speaker on. Let's see if we can tune in a channel. Uh, oh. oh, that's promising. Oh, we've got sound. Let's try the volume. For many of our escapees, surrounding themselves in nature is the driving force for their move. This is good for you. But escaping to the country is rarely a smooth ride. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, it doesn't turn down to minimum, so I presume the pot's Maybe faulty. The Right, so everything's looking really good. All I've got to do now is connect the external power, uh, disconnect, sorry, the external power supply, and uh, we'll put this time based panel back in. Um, now, I've already gone over some dry joints on this already on the back. Um, so, providing there's nothing wrong with this board, um, this set should just come straight on. I've already reformed the main smoothing cap. Um, I th we know the IF channel's working. Um, the only fault we could possibly have is a time base uh, fault, a frame fault or a video output fault but everything's looking really good so let's get this clip back in and then we'll connect it straight to the mains and switch it on see what happens right there's just one important thing to touch on before we put this board back in if you remember before I clipped a crocodile lead on here and I couldn't get an earth and I said there was no earth connection to this panel. Well, this panel actually connects to this chassis here. And in the service manual, it says on the time base board, um, there's a particular screw that you mustn't leave out. It's very important. Uh, and if you look, it's this one here. Uh, and that will earth the time base to this screw here. So with the time base panel in, you would have found an earth connection on there because it had run through there uh, and up there. But it does tell you in the service manual, it's very important that this screw mustn't be left out because if you look, um, it's an earth for what appears to be most of the time base panel. Right, so that's that. Right, so that's the time base panel pound, uh, mounted. Um, that's one of the important earths. Now I would imagine that had a, a washer on it when it was new and I can't remember whether I've taken it off or I've lost it. So I've just put one on temporary um, and these two um, BA, are they BA? Are they 4BA? I can't remember now. Um, yeah, 4BA. Uh, these two things, I don't know whether they were missing or I've lost them. Uh, so I've just borrowed one from there and one from there just temporarily so yeah that's the board back in I'll just connect it all up and then we'll turn it around right well we're not quite out of the woods yet um, because it's actually about three months since I started this restoration so I've just come to plug the board back in 
um, and I've got two plugs there that look identical apart from the colours um, so I'm going to, have to try and figure out which one goes where because I didn't actually take any photographs before I unplugged that uh, which was a bit of a mistake so I'm going to have to stop the camera and come back to this but you can see the time based board mounted in now right so that's the two plugs in question 5Z2, 5Z3 now whatever you do you don't want to get these mixed up because that one there comes straight from the rectified main to power supply uh, and the other one goes to the uh, line and field convergence um, so I'm going to have to be very careful before we plug this in then right silly me I've got a, a light shining on it now and I don't know if you can see it there but they colour coded on the board uh, one's black to match the black connector and one's a clear white to white to match the white connector so yeah that's sorted out no problems there let's get ready to plug it in then when they're connected now just before we turn on I'll just point out one other thing two clips here that don't seem to be doing anything what's actually missing from there is a plastic trimming tool that goes under there um, that you use to adjust the convergence and all the pots on the board uh, now over the years I've kept enough of these um, to have a spare one somewhere but um, that's going to take a while to look so let's get this turn round now um, I've already reformed the main cap um, so we're all ready just to switch on take one final look before I turn it round I might just leave the speaker off for now um, so I can actually hear when the set comes on if there's any strange noises or um, anything uh, untoward so I'll just leave that um, that speaker disconnected for now. Right, let's get it turned around and see what happens. Right, well, unfortunately, uh, we've missed the big switch on because I pressed the wrong button on my camera and deleted the footage. Uh, but you didn't actually miss anything because it didn't come on anyway. Um, but all I did is I turned it on and uh, I couldn't hear any noise or anything, but then I noticed there's a lot of smoke coming up from a resistor. Uh, and there is a resistor down there burnt out so I'm going to have to have a look uh, what that's connected to right so the resistor that's burnt out is this here 4R81 uh, now all that is is the kickstart supply for the line oscillator uh, and then as soon as the line oscillator started it gets its supply from the 12 volt rail um, so the only thing that can be possibly wrong to make that burn up is that capacitor there is leaky um, 4C18 so what I'm going to do is take that out and just swap that first right so that's the capacitor out it, I don't know whether that's original or not it just looks a bit out of place like it might have been uh, changed in the past anyway uh, not to worry, so that's a new capacitor in there, new 100 ohm resistor um, and I think what I might do this time is I might just connect the speaker and then um, we'll know if the set started up because we'll hear sound, if we don't have any sound we know the set's not started up so uh, yeah that's the plan, so let's get it turned around now then right so here we go for the second time if the sound comes on we know the line output stage is running and it's generating a 30 volt rail if we don't have any sound the line stage hasn't started so let's try again three two one on yeah and once again uh, it's failed to start so back to the drawing board time to go home come back to it another day so right the board's out the set again and I'm back on this while I'm just waiting for a delivery um, now 
this is what I couldn't get my head around. All we need is a quick pulse from there to power the line driver transformer to get the set going. But I've just realised I've made a big mistake here um, because this circuit doesn't quite seem to match my diagram. And I've realised what I'm doing wrong now. This is the diagram for the 18 inch. So if we look at that, there's a single startup capacitor to the driver transformer. But when we turn this over to the diagram for the 22 inch, um, we ha actually have two starting up capacitors. We've got fed from the HT rail, we've got one there that goes through the 2.7k to the primary winding and there's another one there, a bigger one, a 10 microfarad that goes through a 2.7k to the primary winding so I did check that and it was alright but now I'm thinking we need to check this one and uh, that underneath has 2.2 and that is the big 10 on top um, so I'm actually thinking now with the last disaster with the capacitor that um, burnt the resistor up I might just change these and see where we go from there so that's the one we'll be changing is 5C3 and 5C33 right so we've got two new kickstart capacitors there um, but the ones I've actually taken out are both alright but if we look at the diagram we've just spotted something else there um, that's the two capacitors I've changed um, so pin 5 of the line driver transformer there's also uh, a 2.2 mic decoupling capacitor there now if that was leaky that would pull the kickstart supply down to ground so just as a precaution I'm going to change that one as well uh, and I have checked both of these 2.7k resistors and that diode there they're all all right so that's the next move is to change 5c29 which I believe looks like this one down here right so I've changed that even though that appears to test all right and there's no great leakage current on it um, but when I first took this panel out I did make some cold checks on a few things and I know in its day the east west modulator diodes which also generate the LT rail uh, were very very unreliable now I did test these um, the first time I did some cold checks on this board before I put it in the airing cupboard but I've just double checked again and this one here appears to be open circuit um, so I wonder if it's perhaps intermittent I'm almost certain that both of them checked alright when I first tried it but now it appears to be open so I might just whip it out and have a look right so i do just have a limited few of these left from the 80s let's pop one of them and see what happens yep measuring open circuit on the diode test that is in fact actually i've just had a change of plan and i'll tell you why the new diode here does not fit onto that board and if you have a look at that the one I've taken out I've tried it again that's definitely open circuit but somebody's actually bent the legs on that to fit in the board uh, and if we look at the diagram it says here both east west diodes are BYX 71350s um, so according to that this is not the right one that should be fitted in there it should be another one of these so i'm going to stick that back in its box and i'm going to look uh for one the same as that right so i've actually got quite a few more of them in stock uh now the one in the set says 
BYX71350. The ones I've got are BYX71600. Um, but I've looked in the equivalent book and it is exactly the same diode. The only difference is this is 600 volt and the one um, specified on the manual has a um, peak inverse voltage of 350. So that should be all right. Let's get that in then. So I actually thinking about it back in the 80s, uh, these Semicron SKE dials used to go very intermittent uh, in a lot of bush sets. Um, and like I say, I'm pretty sure I tested it and it was all right. But I wonder if this powered for a split second and that's what made the diode go open circuit. Um, now this is part of the east-west modulator. Uh, for anyone who's not that familiar with these sets, the reason these diodes are so important because it also doubles up as another function through that winding on the transformer there it also generates the 32 volt supply um, across that reservoir capacitor and it's that supply uh, that actually powers the 12 volt regular uh, sorry the 32 volt regulator down to 12 and it's that 12 that powers the line oscillator um, and that's why um, these diodes play a very important role in starting the set as well so we've got a few more bits in there i don't really think there's much can go wrong i'm, I'm more hopeful on this now and i think maybe the fault we had the line oscillator fault um, I'm thinking now, if you look how clean this board is, it doesn't actually match how clean the rest of the set is. And I wonder if that's not the original board out of this set. Um, maybe it's been swapped over and um, that would explain why we appear to have two different faults on two different boards. Um, so that's the new diodes in the, uh, the new diode in there. Um, all that remains now is to put this back in the set and uh, we'll try it again. Right, so um, the board's back in. I've connected the skybox to it. Um, let's see if it comes on this time. Third time lucky or just another disaster. Just let me sit the camera down there, zoom it in. Right, so here we go. Three, two, one. Oh, we've got sound. We'll see you again next time then. We'll console ourselves with that. Good time in the meantime. Thank you very much. James and Sabotage. Well, we'll raise three players and time to round two. Very well done, everybody. Superheroes all for making it through that last round. Tom, you are those individual scorer. Very well. Right. So that's a good start. We've actually got sound now, so we know it's all up and running, uh, but we didn't have a picture now. I did have a quick look around the back, and I can't see the CRT heaters lit. Um, so I'm just going to recheck. I've plugged everything in, but yeah, it's looking really promising. This right, so I've just pulled off the tube base socket, and the first thing I notice is we've got corrosion on the focus electrode. So uh, I'm obviously going to have to clean that up and hope the pin doesn't break off. <clears throat> but I'm wondering if we've just got um, a bad connection in the tube base socket. So that's the next job to give that a, a clean with a fiberglass pencil first. And another thing I've just noticed there, a little thing, is the green drive wire from the decoder panels dropped off. Um, so... We might even need a new socket, and I really don't know if I've still got one of them. Um, but let's give this a clean up and see what happens. Right, I don't know if you can see that, but we're in trouble. Because the, uh, the springy bit here has actually broke off, or well, it's no longer there, so it's disappeared. Um, so, we're going to have to look for another tube base because um, well I think I'm going to try and power it up first it'll still work without the focus electro we should just have a blurred picture uh, in fact when it's plugged in there there might even be some arcing between there and the pin uh, to give us some sort of focus voltage but um, 
I think I'm still going to try and get the heaters going first and see what happens and then I'll look for a new tube base. So actually I've just noticed something else. In this set we have a transformer um, and a tripler but if we look at this diagram um, it's not showing a tripler we've just got a single diode and uh, that must be like um, an EHT overwinding producing 25 kV rectified by a single diode um, so I don't know whether the transformer fitted is some sort of modification I can't it's such a long time since I last saw one of these sets I cannot remember um, but presumably somebody's had this running at one time or another right so here I'm just applying 6.3 volt from the bench power supply uh, and I can see the heaters lit up so we know the tube's got vacuum anyway at least that's a start so right we're on to the heater voltage problem now because we don't have a heater voltage now well, you would have thought that's quite simple it's just a winding off the line transformer it goes through a variable inductor so we can set up the heater voltage and it comes out on pin one um, now the other pin here pin 14 on the line transformer um, it actually passes into pin 11 and comes out on pin 12 of the east west modulator transformer um, and that comes out to pin 3 um, 5z4 so you would have thought if you put an ohm meter across pin 3 and pin sorry pin 1 and pin 3 yeah if you put ohm meter across 1 and 3 with the tube base disconnected we'd have a virtual short circuit well I'm measuring about 10k um, so somewhere in this circuit there's a break in the heater chain so what I need to look for is on the line transformer is pin 14 and pin 15. Well, you'd think that's pretty easy. But if we move over here to the line transformer, it doesn't have a pin 14 and 15. It stops at 13. So I can only assume that 14 um, and 15 must come out somewhere on top of the transformer. So we're going to have to take this board out again now. Right, I can see what the problem is now. Now, whoever's fitted this brand new line transformer has never had this set running. Um, and I can show you why now. Um, the heater transform pins here, 14 and 15, and then they go to the set heater choke. Well, that's the set heater inductor there. Um, the pins 14 and 15 come out on top of the line transformer. But if we look here, the earthy end of the focus control is connected to that brown wire which is connected to the heater choke which is that is totally wrong you shouldn't have the earthy end of the focus control connected to here and I can see exactly what the problem is um, that and that are the heater windings and these two um, these two are connected up wrong now if you look on there somebody scribbled something so obviously they must have wrote down what went where um, but that is definitely that brown wire is definitely connected up wrong uh, so all we've got to do is trace that blue wire see what that goes to uh, just so we can see um, if there's any that's probably part of the beam limiting circuit we can just see if anything's been damaged down here uh, but that's why we don't have any heater continuity because these two wires are the wrong way around right that's it so i connect the meter there as you can see we've got infinity uh, that's connected to pin one and three of there um, if i swap these over we should have zero ohms or thereabouts on the meter so we need the blue one going to the heat sink right that's it i've swapped over the two wires and if you look at the meter now we've got more or less zero ohms so we've got heater continuity now so um for about the fourth or fifth time we're gonna to have to put this back in the set and uh, try it again see what happens but i'm confident now uh, that's all it was somebody's got these reversed right well that's the board fitted in again 
Um, we've just got to address the problem with this now before we power it up. Now I remember, I've got a vague memory way back in the 80s that these, these tube base sockets used to give trouble in uh, Bush TVs and I used to keep these in stock. So I've been searching for quite a while through my old stock and look what I found here. I'm almost certain that is the correct one for the telly. It probably came from CPC with a part number like that when CPC was a really good company and they used to sell um, parts for TV. So let's just get one out and have a quick look. Yeah, that is the exact one. And the reason it looks uh, different is because the one in there, the actual plastic top's missing. But if you look at that, that is exactly the right base for this rank TV. Uh, and not only that, the other one's corroded, the focus pin's burnt, uh, sorry, the focus pin um, has broke off, but it looks like it's got very hot anyway. Um, so, what we need to do now is just get that fitted in. Right, so that's how it should look, um, and you can see it's the cover that's missing off that. That's why it looks a bit odd. I've also soldered on the green drive wire back. Um, I've just got to put this, uh, there's an earth connection to go on there somewhere. That one. And uh, the lead for the focus potential. And then uh, we'll try it again then. Let's hope we don't have to take this panel out again. Right, so the moment of the big switch on. Um, I don't know what we're going to find this time, but we can be absolutely certain whoever fitted the new line transformer has not actually had this set running because the, um, the heater wasn't connected up properly. So um, I've got this connected to a skybox, just like it was before. I've not altered the tuning. Um, I'm going to set the camera up on a little tripod and uh, we'll switch on and see what happens this time. Hopefully something will come on this time. Right, so the camera's rolling. Now there could very well be more wrong with this, uh, even if it does come on. But here we go. Take a seat. Get ready. Three, two, one. Statements and suspects in justice and alibi struggling to prove Nigel's innocence in death and paradise tonight at nine. Press red for Marie Antoinette, creating her own rules to become French queen, stylish and lavish, a night player. Well, so much for that. It didn't come on again. Back to the drawing board, guys and girls. Right, this is really strange. I can hear the frame output stage running. Um, the CRT eaters aren't very bright, so obviously there's a low EHT problem. Um, we've got about 500 volts on the A1. Um, we should have more than that. Um, but we don't have any screen illumination. So what I've done is I've just unplugged the um, anode cavity so I can measure the e EHT. But I think I can see the problem. I'm holding this lead here and it's very, very warm there. Um, so I'm thinking there might be a resistor in there. And if this is a screen lead, uh, it might be, uh, might be broken down inside and it's pulling the EHT down. Uh, but I'm just going to measure the EHT coming out of there. But that is very, very warm there. Right, well the answer is we only have about 2 kV of EHT, so I think that leads pulling down the uh, EHT voltage. So if we look at the end of the anode cap where it plugs into the, um, into the CRT, it has a 68k resistor in there and I'm wondering uh, if that's a screen lead coming from the tripler. Uh, the fact that it's warm in the end um, must mean that the resistor in there's well I don't know if something gone wrong with it but um, I think given the fact that it's actually a brand new tripler I think really all I can do is cut this lead cut this end off and see what happens
right so i've just plugged it in and left it for 30 seconds again just to double check and it's absolutely right this is getting hot um so the only alternative is cut that off right so i've actually got to the resistor there um, and it absolutely stinks of burning um, but the EHT lead um, isn't a screen lead that just went in the end of the resistor so I'm not sure how that resistor can be burning um, especially when there's no load on the end of it but let's just power up the set without the EHT lead on and see what we can measure Right, well this gets even stranger, we've still only got about 2kV without the anode cap on. Right, so I'll tell you what, before we do anything else, I'm just going to measure the voltage across 5R8, because that is the earthy end uh, of the line output stage and the total voltage across there that will uh, we'll be able to work out by the voltage across that what the total current is flowing in the line output stage um, and see if it's excessive um, I'm guessing it's not excessive because it's not trip the overload trip uh, but just let's measure the voltage across that and make a quick calculation first right so there's 8.7 volt across r8 so the total current flowing in the line output stage is only 320 milliamp so it's not excessive um it's almost like it's working with the scan coils disconnected um but anyway it's time to go home now i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to stop this camera and, and think about this for a bit longer and come back to it Right, so that is the resistor out of the um, anode cavity, um, anode cap. I'm just going to repair it that 47k. I think the only purpose of that is to limit uh, the current during a flashover. Um, and if we look at it, oh no, actually it says 10k, not 47. Yeah, 10k. Um, so let's swap that for 10k and then hopefully we can repair this and get it all back together right so um, I've chosen a 12k resistor to go in there and the reason for that is it's just this is a very old vintage one it's just about as long as the one we took out uh, so there's less chance of it arcing over but uh, that'll be absolutely fine we'll just repair that and then we'll get back and see what the fault is on the telly hopefully uh, for about the fifth or sixth time we'll get it going this time right so that's good enough for now that's the repaired uh, EHT cap so this is what I can't get my head round the resistor in there has just burnt up and it's completely melted all the new uh, sleeving I've put on even though we only have about 2kV of EHT look at that it's completely melted that resistor inside there uh, now it's almost like the tube shorted out but it can't be because when we put an EHT meter on there when it's not connected to the tube we still only have 2kV so why on earth has that resistor burnt up That is unbelievable. Right everybody, I've puzzled over this problem and now I know what the answer is. Now back in the 80s when you had a, a line output fault uh, on a telly, the first thing you do is disconnect the tripler. Um, now the reason I've not disconnected this tripler, um, if you can see it down there, is because it's actually brand new and it appears to have come with the line output transformer which is also brand new um, it's obviously a modification um, or a replacement part because um, in the service manual we have a 25 kV overwinding and just a single diode uh, rectifier we don't have a tripler but I think what the problem is um, 
um, whoever wired up the heater winding and they got the connection mixed up with the uh, anti-breathing or the beam limiter uh, the earthy end of that is connected to the tripler um, and I think whoever's got these connections swapped over um, it must have damaged the tripler and it's for that reason because the tripler's brand new that's why I didn't initially suspect it but what I've done now is I've disconnected the tripler and uh, straight away the A1 voltage has come up from about 500 volts to 700 volts um, but the big giveaway is the CRT is actually lit up a lot brighter uh, now so we'll just show you that so that's the set running so that's the A1 voltage we now got 775 volt before we only had a about 500 um, if you look down there the CRT heater is a lot brighter than it was before uh, so that's the answer um, that triplet even though it's brand new is actually faulty um, and I would imagine it's because it's had a, a wrong connection and it's damaged it so the next problem now I've got is to find one of these triplers right so I'm just looking through my old stock and I've got a load of triplers left over here from the 90s and these look very similar to the one in the set uh, but what we're going to have to do is going to have to see if we can get some sort of data sheet on these. Right, so that's um, an, uh, a new old stock tripler. Um, but we need to get a data sheet on this. And also we need a data sheet on the tube, which is Toshiba Blackstripe 560 AKB 22. Uh, because we need to know what focus potential we need on pin 9. Because I think in the past I've tried these in, in sets and they have an unusual focus voltage. Um, so this might not be suitable but what I really need, uh, I need to search on the internet now for some data sheets uh, for these and see if we can match one up. But anyway, we're we getting there. I think we're one more step now from lighting the screen up on this tally. Right, so this time I'm expecting a result. Um, I've deliberately not connected up the speaker because I want to hear the EHT come up. I don't want to hear the sound on the speaker. I've connected to Skybox already. I can't find the information I'm looking for on the internet regarding the focus voltage or the focus voltage output from the tripler. Um, so there's only one thing to do and that is to just hook it in temporarily. Um, I know this is uh, not very safe but I won't be putting my hands too close to this and um, I just want to see if it powers up first um, I would imagine it'll work the worst that could happen is we're going to have the wrong focus voltage in the blurred picture so let's move the camera over here I've set it up on a tripod right let's see what happens Standing well back, of course. That's the key actor. I'm going to hit the power. Ah, now we're getting somewhere. Ah, oh, look at that. Let's get the brightness down. Right, so we do have some issue with the noisy parts and um, the focus doesn't actually look that bad. Uh, so that's probably, um, that triple will probably do. So I'm just going to stop the camera while I just twiddle with these controls a minute and just um, see if we can get them something like. Right, so the tube in this looks absolutely perfect. Uh, you can see the grey scales off, it's quite red. Uh, let's just turn up the colour. Look at that. Uh, and the focus isn't that bad actually. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the colour down and uh, very carefully I'm going to attempt to get my arm round there and adjust the grayscale which you can just see the pot. So I'll have to stop the camera for that. We'll come back in a second. But yeah, that's looking really good so far. 
Right, so that's the grayscale done. Um, now, one thing I haven't done yet is I've not connected up the anti-breathing circuit to the earthy end of the um, focus control. We'll worry about that after. Um, I'm just trying to get this going at the moment. But because I've had a speaker sat on top, uh, we're just going to have to degauss it. Uh, and I've also adjusted the focus control. Uh, that's very, very good. There's a slight convergence error there. Uh, which we'll worry about in a bit and uh, also the um, the width slightly in there um, now what you really need to adjust these and I've gone to a lot of trouble and look for it you need the special rank uh, trimming tool that would have come with this set um, when they were new that's for the convergence that end and uh, these ends do, do the presets. Um, I used to take the, the this was fitted in the back um, in a clip, and I used to take these out. So I've got loads of them somewhere. But like everything else, it takes a lot of finding. But I've just managed to find that. So um, let's just stop the camera and come back in a second. But you can see it's coming on really well. We've got good focus, good grayscale. Let's just uh, get it degaussed. In fact, I'll just leave the camera on while you can watch this. Right, that's the degaussing done. Just a few more adjustments and uh, then we'll put some colour on, maybe even put sound on as well. Right, quick tweak of the width and there we go. Uh, let's turn up, the black band of course is coming from the camera. Let's turn up the colour and put a picture on from the skybox. Look at that, what a tally. Yeah, brightness control still very, very noisy. But yeah, what a result that for a 19 probably 1977 this tally uh, a rank bush murphy z 718c chassis right so that is the temporary speaker connected up i've still got to find a, a working speaker from somewhere because the one in the set's open circuit Yeah, what a fantastic set that is. Um, obviously, there's quite a long way to go yet. I've got to uh, take the time base panel out again so I can fit this tripler in properly and, and reconnect the anti breathing circuit. Let's just disconnect the sound a minute. Um, yeah, so I've got to fasten the tripler in properly, connect the anti-breathing circuit and then there's the, um, the convergence errors that need doing, I'll have to put that on a, a cross hatch to do that um, but yeah, what a fantastic result um, I'm so indebted to um, John Joe at Vintage Irish Radio and TV um, because um, I was only a kid last time I repaired one of these sets All right, guys and girls on YouTube, many thanks for watching, and uh, I'll catch you in the next video. Goodbye.